at Sunshine Hospital in Melbourne's west, staff are preparing another daily delivery of the Pfizer vaccine. It needs to be kept in the deep freeze and then transferred to a fridge. We check the fridge twice a day, we check the freezer four times a day. Um, so the last time we checked was at f um, 5 o'clock last night, so now we check again from 5 o'clock until now. And in this unremarkable paper bag is the world's most sought-after medical breakthrough. After a few final checks, it's sent on its way to be injected into willing participants. Today, it'll be frontline workers at Melbourne Airport. Next step is to remove the bag. And we also have to check it's been tampered with. So it hasn't. This is uh, day five for us uh, for the commencement of the COVID vaccination program here at Melbourne Airport. Uh, we have to date vaccinated 686 uh, airport workers. Thank you very much. The COVID vaccine comes in vials of multiple doses and needs to be diluted and drawn out into individual syringes. It's a delicate step-by-step -step process which many in the healthcare sector may be unfamiliar with until now. Here in Australia, almost all our vaccines are single-dose uh, vaccines and so it's very straightforward uh, to administer one vaccine to one patient. We haven't had a multi-dose vaccine in Australia now for something like 10 years uh, when we last faced a significant flu pandemic. We have to also now invert it 10 times again. One, two. The vaccine also needs to be injected within six hours after opening, otherwise it expires. That's one. Oh, and it can be a lot of things that can go wrong, increased risk of errors. For example, not diluting it beforehand, um, expiry time, uh, preparing it. So it's very important that we have that technique right, otherwise it wouldn't work. Today, mass vaccinations for coronavirus officially began in Sydney. More than a thousand... The federal government has launched a media blitz since the Prime Minister received one of the first shots last week. But bungles have revealed problems in the system. In Victoria, more than 120 doses at an aged care home in Melbourne had to be thrown out because of expiry concerns. And in Queensland, a Brisbane doctor has been stood down after giving two elderly patients four times the recommended dose of the Pfizer vaccine. The doctor concerned made a serious mistake. He delivered an incorrect dose of the vaccine to two people. In the aged care sector, the government has contracted private health providers to roll out the vaccine. The doctor in question worked for a company called Healthcare Australia and did not complete a compulsory online training course before injecting patients. It's accredited training, it's four hours. They would have enough information to understand uh, as postgraduate, as registered professionals, how to give the vaccine. That course is run by the Australian College of Nursing. Who checks that the clinicians have completed the training course? It will need to be the employer. They have the responsibility. So who checks that the employer has made sure that the clinicians have completed the training? The governance component of that would be the responsibility of the government and that could be state and territory as well as federal. It's um, odd that, that those credentials weren't checked. I mean, when they come into the vaccine facility, somebody obviously is accepting that they're well trained and they need to check that they're well trained. The two elderly patients are said to be well and experts stress the potential for overdose is factored in before vaccines are approved. These vaccines have been tested at much higher doses than, uh, than what we would generally uh, administer to patients. They've been shown to be safe uh, in those doses. The rollout is off to a slow start, with only half of the 60,000 doses available administered nationally in the first week. Tasmania used all of its allocation, but Queensland just 22%. On the 60,000 doses, uh, we're likely to achieve that either by Sunday night or within 24 hours afterwards. I understand that there have been different paces of start and uh, that's been the case with uh, uh, different states at different times, uh, but all of them have good plans. 
The Defence Force has now been brought in to help with aged care amid delays in the system. Residents at this centre on the New South Wales Central Coast are only now receiving their vaccine after having appointments cancelled last week. The company at the centre of the overdose bungle, Healthcare Australia, was responsible for the rollout here. I understand it's a logistic nightmare, but, you know, they've really mucked us up and they've really balls it up with the residents. Healthcare Australia did not respond to 7.30's questions, but its CEO has stood aside as an investigation continues. The first stage of the vaccine rollout, Phase 1A, involves more than 670,000 Australians, including aged care residents, frontline staff and quarantine workers. We're now here on the timeline, but it'll take months before almost everyone is vaccinated and the government hopes that'll be completed by October. It's a very ambitious target. Uh, it means at its peak we're going to have to be vaccinating 200,000 people every day. But it is possible. Um, we're not off to a great start, uh, having getting to about 4,000 a day now. The next immediate phase will be 1B, involving 6 million Australians. That's when the wider community, including the elderly and Indigenous people over 55, will start to receive their vaccine. 4,600 GPs will be among the providers this month. We're ready, we're going to do a practice run of vaccinating five people and then multiply by two to see how many ten would take us. So It's a huge logistical challenge for GP Dr Joe Garra, who's preparing for the arrival of the AstraZeneca vaccine at his clinic in Melbourne's West. Doctor, but just check, you're not allergic to anything before yeah, you jab them. Yeah. Okay. And you're not pregnant. Yeah. All right. But he needs a much bigger space to vaccinate at least 10 people at a time. In most waiting rooms, that would fill the waiting room, which means the whole clinic would come to a halt. So all other things would stop. So we can't, we can't afford to stop all other health care just to give the vaccine. And he's in the dark about the finer details. We're waiting to hear sometime, hopefully this week or next week, when we're allowed to start, how much vaccine we're getting and all that process. The federal government concedes there's room for improvement and hopes vaccinations over the coming weeks will catch up. I think what we really need to look at long term in terms of our success is say in two months how the states are doing. Are they at the kind of level per day that they need to get to to get everyone vaccinated by October? I think that's going to be a much more important number than where we are in the first five days of the program. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.